Alright. Hey, Blades. This is Fang here. And welcome to some of the Sinking City. As we're going to get back right into it. I am starting a little early today. Um, a little is an understatement. I'm an hour early. Oh, man. But I have an appointment today that kind of made it. say pretty impossible for me to uh do much else and the fact that if I were to stay on my schedule I'd have a big interruption so alright so we were finishing the letters from Oakmont uh, the last that we were playing and we were doing a little bit of the side glut side quests real quick let's go ahead and finish the letters of Oakmont um, so I need to go down that way if I remember correctly I had an issue with this one because I couldn't find the letter hopefully uh, hopefully I can find it Definitely glad to be replaying this. Definitely missed it. Oh, excuse me. Quit staring, you come Get the rock out. So yeah, me starting an hour early, um, I'll be able to get both my episodes done for the Sinking City before I have to deal with my appointment, so we're definitely going to be an hour early for each episode. And I'm just jumping straight in to the next one, so just hang in there with me. Got a lot of loading screens. about this game that I'm actually quite happy about. There's uh, no stamina. I'm kind of glad that there isn't. This, this make this game a pain in the butt. They had it. I do apologize if I still sound groggy. And the worst part is, I think I'm starting to finally get hit with allergies. I've been expecting them, but...
So this one I had trouble with. Can't go back there. Simply because I couldn't find the letter. And just to double check. Northern Grimhaven Bay, which is what this is. At the corner of Hubert Ave and Whisper Street. Here's Whisper Street. And Hubert Ave. It's on the corner. This one drove me crazy. So that definitely is a building you can enter. Oh, you gotta be kidding me, right? I swear I've been searching for that forever. And here it is. Alright. Obed Marsh Diary. 21 March 1856. New South Wales. On the day we arrived near Balls pyramid, a giant rock around 2,000 feet high extending from the sea. The air is poisoned all around it, and you can barely see the tip of the monolith. The catch is good here, and brought us more gold. I had to give them two slave women. We bought in Samatra some mar some mar eh, Wretches were terrified when they saw them. Good riddance. We landed on Lord Howe Island a few nautical miles away for fresh water and fruit. The heady dengue was put at sea at 8.15 in the morning. 
Last time we were here in 1847, there were three settlers and they're a brongal wives. I don't think I know that word. Uh, this time uh, only the women remained and they were not the same. Tattooed, their eyes were red with blood and dead animal carcasses were strewn around the camp. They slept on the floor beside the corpses. We drank and danced with them and one played a strange musical flute. It was sounds we never heard before. One of them took me to her hut while I was at it between her legs in the dark. Matthews came with a torch and I could see that above me the dead husband was hooked to the roof and skin over his face dried like a hundred year old apple. Bones and clothes he was his mouth open and distorted in an endless shout and still see his eyes alive and rolling looking at me the witch was laughing hard while wiping her thighs all her teeth filled to a point like a wolf or a shark we fled this cursed place leaving the witches behind uh, that was, that's quite disturbed. Alright. So I got... Two skill points out of that. Oh, yeah. Well, definitely finished mine. Completely capped on it. And then... Start working on this. Close to death, slowly regenerate a limited amount of health or ammo. Let's start with the ammo. Carry seven more pistol rounds. I actually don't even know if I ran into the cap for that yet. Which is, I guess, a good thing, huh? And that completed that side quest completely. Uh, so we got field research. Or through the looking glass, which we did do some of that already. Let's go ahead and do the field research, though. I think I already have these marked. Yeah. I already had these marked. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and do these. Uh, looks like I got some fast travels. I got one fast travel that will do uh, most I can else I could do here is just make sure I got all the loot man I don't believe I missed that symbol the last time I was here a symbol was not hard to find actually kind of annoying that I missed it. if you could clean I actually have not properly looked it up to see if you can or not I imagine if you can they would be a pain in the ass to clean out too not something that would be just like days gone type style where you could easily clean out an infestation zone within like a few minutes. You would need a lot of ammo.
All right. So, those that don't know, the research is from the doctor a while back in a few episodes. So, people remember where I got it from. Extra, extra. All the news that's fit to print. Buy a paper mistake. Location. So, what does it say? Western Raid Heights, uh, the locked shop, Ward Street. So, this is Ward Street between Bourbon Road and Sam. So, it should be somewhere in there, right? There it is. this letter a fight neophyte the funkened mother blesses you uh, your servitude has been noticed you will have the chance to join the inner circle and see our mother with thine own eyes our brothers carry the bodies of her abandoned children to prove yourself worthy prepare to place prepare a place they can be hidden the forgotten forever in return the funkin mother will embrace you and grant you her generous gifts all right dude <laughs> oh damn that scared me Oh, that was it for that, huh? Guys, explode! Almost, almost forgot Those about that. stink worse than a barrel of rotten fish, or fisk, whatever. <laughs> oh man, that fishbowl effect messes with me.
mother's grace. Uh, the fucking mother devours the weak flesh. The fucking mother. <laughs> wow. The fecund mother gives new life to those consumed, a new birth in many forms. The fecund mother has many children and her family grows. The fecund mother is kind, for anyone may be her child, but bad children are purged and left outside in the cold light. Keep the secrets of your mother and she will grant you eternity. This putrid slime is everywhere. I'll take a sample for Dr. Grant to examine. Ugh, the slime stinks even worse than the bodies. Before the neighbors see us. Are those the last ones? thing's huge. I'm just gonna put it out there like that thing. I don't want to run into. I have a feeling we will. I did everything you asked, yeah? So when will my initiation begin? Okay, let's see what we have here. Quick. Bring them in before the neighbors see us. I did everything you asked, yeah? So when will my initiation begin? <laughs> Members of a cult were disposing of bodies in the basement of the shop. The corpses merged together to form a huge monstrosity. That's how you run into the big dude. Like, that's what that big dude is. Just. Oh, sweet. So, next one. Is way over here. Ten buck too. Quite literally. This, though, we can get rid of. And we don't have a fast travel for this one, so we're definitely gonna be hoofing it. Extra. All the news that's fit to print. Buy it, paper. You eat it over there. Matt. Yeah, go get it. Get it, baby. Oh, jeez. Someone's waking up cranky. Fine. Eat it over here. You just be clean. <laughs> 
Sorry, I gotta mute it for a sec. Alright, sorry about that wait. Had to get my daughter situated there. Oh man. Okay. 
I don't know why he attacked me. That was really strange. I think he was possessed, but... Or maybe he just doesn't like outsiders. That is good. There's a good chance for that. What's this madness? Giant impassable wall, huh? Possible wall here. <laughs> extra, extra. All the new right. Definitely gonna keep my eye out though for fast travel off in this direction. It's just another impassable wall, huh? Fast travel audio, okay. Dead end. There is a fast travel over here, though, that we haven't got. Old Grove North, huh? Extra, extra. All the news that's fit for print. So what does this say? Okay, Eastern Heights, where we're at. Willow Lane, between Herald Street and Bullock Street. Because it doesn't extra, look like extra. I'm able to oh, go in there. there. It's like blocked up.
There's a door down here. And apparently a trash can. Ah, staff needed. The Count... Uh... Uglino? Restaurant is preparing to reopen. Kitchen hands, dishwashers, waiters, and waitresses needed. All interested parties should come to Count Uglino for an interview with Chef Armand Myers. This place didn't have much of a chance, huh? Uh, formal invitation letter. Dear Mr. Thorne Martin, it is my pleasure to invite you to a tasting of exclusive and exquisite dishes, which will be taking place at the Count Ugolino restaurant in two weeks' time. This is a closed event, and only the most honorable guests will be in attendance. I hope you will join us. Sincerely yours, A. Meyer Chef. There we go. Uh, whoever got dragged down there is definitely dead. Newspaper. Mysterious disappearance. Police have started to look into the disappearance of several young women in Advent. Witnesses said they saw the missing victims visit the Count Ugolino restaurant, but the police investigation found nothing illegal. Chef Armand Myers rejects all accusations of improperty. Uh oh. Something gone down. craft real quick. And none of that. Definitely craft some bullets. There we go. Those some odd cooking tools. Oh, these aren't your typical kitchen utensils. Well, I don't think the health inspector will be pleased. 
So he was cutting up women? Let me guess, using them as food source, right? I might be too surprised. My esteemed patrons, <laughs> presenting my latest delicacy. Ah, don't be greedy. Don't hurry to eat, please. You'll always be my most well-regarded clients. <laughs> Alrighty then, he definitely went mad. <sighs> I was always sure my dishes could not be matched. Those who taste human flesh always crave for more. Yeah, he was serving human flesh. It is difficult to find enough meat for my patrons. They spend all their time hiding in the basement, bleeding to be fed again. Today I went downstairs and saw how the patrons had changed. They love my cooking so much that their bodies have adapted to consume more. I cannot let them down. I must post new ads in the Oakmont Chronicle. My funds are running low. Guess I'll have to find a new prosperous patron to support my business. Well, yes, good thing Thor marked in there. Check this out, huh? Recipe for human meat. Ugh. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Cut the flesh from the young woman's hip into four ounce pieces. Then pound each one to a thickness of one third inch. Season with black pepper on each steak. Lay one slice of cheese, a few leaves of sage, and two slices of prosciutto. Roll into pinwheels. Uh, heat the oil in a large skillet over medium-high heat. Quickly brown the pinwheels on the outside. I hope my new patrons enjoy the dish. You're a sick, sick man. collected. But not all evidence collected. aren't your typical kitchen utensils. Well, I don't think the health inspector will be pleased.
My esteemed patrons, <laughs> presenting my latest delicacy. So I... Don't be greedy. Don't hurry to eat, please. You'll always be my most well-regarded clients. <laughs> Blood is still fresh. There we go. So with that done, we've done all the field research. So this guy just went crazy. Actually, seems like he went mad with, like, no influence of, you know, the Cthulian creatures, which is actually quite disturbing. This man was just disturbed, for sure. too much time. Go ahead and get rid of that since we're done. And fast travel. Too bad, an hour in, and we've already completed two side quests. Paid a visit to that awful restaurant. I'd call it a den of evil, but that would be an understatement. Good grief. What happened? Uh, the cook was mad, a cannibal, and fed those jumping monstrosities on human flesh. He called them patrons. That restaurant was a destination for Oakmont's elite. I don't know why. Are you suggesting that it was cannibalism that caused such a horrific transformation? These days, alas, cannibalism is not so rare. Could it be that all the Cositians, as Westerbrook calls them, were once men? I visited that old shop you mentioned and found a few things you may be interested in. Even took a sample for studying. What did you discover? I was sure a huge creature could not have wandered inside unnoticed. The cult of the Fecund Mother was dumping corpses of their victims in the shop's basement. Hmm. Professor Westerbrook's research does suggest the Acheronians are attracted to dead bodies. No. This one formed from the corpses themselves. There was a putrid slime on everything. Maybe that's the cause of this unnatural rebirth. You said you took a sample of it. Well, I can conduct some experiments on rats. If your theory holds true, what a marvelous discovery! We've discovered a lot of disturbing information about the wild beasts. 
What are you gonna do with it? Well, I've already contacted the university. We'll cooperate to further study these phenomena. The public deserve to know. It would help them to protect themselves and others. <laughs> it would cause mass hysteria. Doesn't the city have enough problems already? I must insist you keep all this confidential. I thought you wanted help. And I will. But we must prepare our advice carefully, with scientific rigor. We cannot rush this, my friend. Why? Be safe. We don't have any free beds left. <laughs> hmm. I have to play doctor, huh? Alright, so... casebook. We got Through the Looking Glass. And we got the main story. Well, let's go ahead and do the main story, though. Which, unfortunately, I haven't done in a while, so I'm kind of lost on where I'm at. Something about finding Harriet Doe, though, I know that much. Uh, Thornmont's expedition was attacked in the depths beneath Oakmont. Uh, the attackers all had distinctly fish like features. As Sans was killed in the fight, he carried a dagger and a particularly golden amulet, which resembles a fish eye. This can't be the only attack they have carried out. There must be evidence of more such crimes throughout the city. So we're going to the police station. I got a knowledge point. Don't mind if I do. Uh, definitely get the revolver with more ammo. Don't waste my time. All right, Thormont's task. Remember, Thormont wants me to find the Professor Harriet Doe. To do this, I must investigate and discover who attacked the expedition. This is what we know about the expedition so far. The only attack they have carried out, one of the assailants was killed in the fight. He carried a dagger. Um uh, so violent crimes I would definitely suspect suspects we don't really have a district to go off of instruments of crime documentation, impounds, criminal pattern. I'm sorry, one sec guys.
All right, police report. At about 10.30 p.m. April 15th, at the Fish Market, Eastern Shells, corner of Orchard Ave and Holy Fire Lane, I approached a suspicious-looking Innsmouther. As he was stalking a young woman, the suspect had in his possession a peculiar golden amulet which resembled a fish eye seized, as well as a dagger seized. The subject, the suspect, resisted arrest. When I tried to cuff him, he tried for he cried for help, screaming for his brothers from EOD. Several other armed Innsmouthers appeared from the fish market. I was forced to release said Innsmouther in retreat. The suspect got away. The case is pending for their investigation, Lieutenant Phil. Phelps. All right, so now that we got a lead, the fish markets, Eastern Shells at the corner of Orchard Ave and Holy Fire Lane. So it was right there. Cool. That was easy to find. <laughs> and we even got a fast travel there. Exact, yeah, yeah. So they probably had what a hideout over here if his brothers were that close. Guess that's what we're looking for. Unless it's in the fish market itself. There will be. And it is only fair to be afraid. Titanic forces are at work. Infinitely greater than ourselves. Unknowable. Incomprehensible. There will be sacrifice. There will be loss. There will be darkness. But these are the hallmarks of a pivotal moment in time. And each of us has a part to play. I guess this city wouldn't be complete without a doomsday prophet. Let me assure you, I am anything but. I am called Ebernote Blackwood, and this is the place I have chosen to share my message. Please, come to one of my full sermons. Ah, uh, Charles Reed. Good to meet you. Blackwood, you're a member of the Grand Family. I am, indeed. 
the last of that line. Inheritor of an empty mansion and a severed history. I'll see you around. Oh, this used to be an okay place to live. You won't find a better house at that price. Take as much as you need. It won't cost fish. fish. Fresh fish. Take as much as you need. It won't cost you a penny. Don't be shy. We have enough for everyone. I've heard that I can find an organization hereabouts that goes by the name of the EOD. Am I in the right place? You sure are. I happen to be a representative of the EOD. Pleased to meet you. My name's Anna. Can I help you with something? Uh, Charles Reed. Just a few questions, if I may. <laughs> of course. Ask away, Charlie. What is the EOD? I mean, what, what do you do as an organization? Well, we are a non-profit charitable organization. <laughs> Actually, it's... Better to say that we're a gathering of volunteers. We're not an official charity yet. As for what we do, we try to help ease the suffering in our city as much as we can. Oh. How do you do that? We provide fish for the hungry and fix the homes of the poor. We also patrol the streets at night to keep the wild beasts and bandits at bay. And many, many more things. Whatever needs doing. Anything to help the people, Charlie. What does EOD stand for? Everyone's obvious duty. When we began, it also had is to help each other. But we dropped that part. It was a little bit wordy. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's been great chatting with you, but I'm actually here to speak with the EOD leadership. You know where I can find him? <laughs> Not so fast, Charlie. Nobody meets the top brass without being a member. You need to earn a rank in the EOD first. Oh, you're kidding me. What for? <laughs> you need to prove yourself. Show us through your actions that you're worth our time. No offense, Charlie. How can I join? That all depends on what skills you can offer us. What do you do best? Huh. Well, I'm afraid my resume's in my other jacket. Let me see. I was in the Navy during the war. Never since it ended, I've been a private eye. <sighs> the sea provides. Turns out we have a job that's a perfect fit for you. Okay. Tell me more about this job. Well... Last night, someone tried to break into our fish storage room. Luckily, the guards scared him off, but I fear they'll be back to finish the job. That's why we've been busy today giving away all the fish to the people. We'd rather it get into the hands of the needy than to some thief. And you want me to find whoever this thief is, right? <laughs> You're smart, Charlie. I like it. Exactly. Fine. Count me in. Good. Thank you. Here's the address. Tell the guard the password, I serve the C, and he'll let you into the storeroom. See you later. Do you want a fishy? <laughs> you want a fisher? Fisher for sale? All right, uh, da -da 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 -da. mine palace. Yeah, he's giving away fish. Oh, not. Without the fish provided by the AOD, the city is at risk of famine. And as request, the fish storage is in Western Shells. 
on Hawking Lane, which is there, between Warren Road and Liberty Road. So, right there. Okay. And it looks like I have a fast travel over there. Sweet. here. I serve the sea. Anna sent me here to investigate the recent break-in. <sighs> I see be praised. Finally. I'm Daryl. Daryl Grimes. How can I help you? Can you tell me what happened? Don't skimp on the details. <sighs> Not much to tell, sadly. It was a man, that much I know. He snuck in while I was upstairs, tried to steal the fishies, but I heard him. Nearly got him with a harpoon by Kay, but I missed in the dark. He got away, that Dane. But I wonder, why steal what you can get for free? Yeah, that's a bit of a puzzler. What did this burglar look like? Same height as you. Not too big, not too small. Nothing to write home about. An average Joe. If not for his, uh, bald head. That guy was as bald as an egg. I could see the moonlight reflecting off the top of his head. And what did he steal? Nothing. I scared him off before he could. Where did he go after that? Don't know, pal. He was way faster than me. What's the deal with the, the password and such? Orders from the higher-ups. I don't get to ask why. All right. Well, that's enough for now, Mr. Grimes. I've got to go to work. Here, take the key. May the sea bless you. Wow. It pierced a good inch of solid wood like it was nothing. are annoying. <clears throat> the hall's fresh, still smells of the sea. No signs of decomposition at all. That's a fancy looking bottle. Looks like it was taken from a lab somewhere. There's some kind of powder left on the bottom. I better not touch it. It could be dangerous.
Nice work. When I was a kid, I would have gone nuts for this. Well, if it was finished, that is. This guy must really be into his hobby to have such impressive tools. Well, they're from the orphanage. Dear Mr. Grimes, we can't thank you enough for what you do for the children. In these dark times, your toys go down like a tall glass of water. We all pray for your good health every day. We also kindly remind you that we still await your visit. All our staff, and of course the children, are eager to finally meet our benefactor in person. So please don't hesitate and come as soon as you are able. With eternal gratitude, administration of Oakmont St. Jerome's Orphanage. I don't know why I'm struggling with names today, but there we go. So he's a toy maker, huh? Kind of odd for him to be muscle then. Dead as a doornail, but I don't see any wounds. So first it ate the fish, and now it's dead. That's troubling. It's like a cat. It's disturbing. Clearly, it was this one first. I hope Professor Westerbrook never learns about this. Just a little bit more. Oh, no. And he would have got his harpoon. Darn pests! Mayor, take them. Come back, you thief. I'll show you not to mess with us. A man broke into the fish storage, poisoned the fish with an unknown substance, then made a noise which alerted the guard, who chased him out.
the po poisoner in the university. The man who broke into the EOD fish storage is somehow connected to the university. I need to visit the university. The quantities of possibly poisoned fish have already been distributed into the city. Poor citizens. Cool. We got all evidence. You dig up anything interesting? I sure did. Turns out our friend here wasn't here to rob the place. He came to poison the fish. By the sea. Are you sure? Well, that's what the evidence suggests, anyway. Okay. This is horrible. Please don't tell Anna it was my fault, or she'll have me quartered. Look, nothing personal, Daryl, but I need to tell Anna the truth. Okay. All those people might suffer because I... Because I... Do what you must, Mr. Reed. If it's that bad, maybe you should skip town, hide somewhere. You don't understand, Mr. Reed. You can't hide from your own conscience. Uh, can you remind me where I can find the Oakmont University? You can't miss it. It's the greatest thing Oakmont has to offer. Except maybe our famous caramelized eel stew. Give me your map. There you go. But don't forget to first report your findings to Anna. I found a hidden room full of shackles and chains downstairs. Looks like some kind of torture chamber. Know anything about it? What? Stop talking, truck. That can't be true. I know this place top to bottom. Now, Daryl, you know I'm a detective. And if you're lying, I'm going to find out one way or another. I've got nothing to do with it, I swear, Mr. Reed. Go ask Anna. She's responsible for renting the place. I know nothing about this. Okay. I'll talk to Anna. We'll see if your story holds up. See ya. May the sea protect you. So where is the university? Oh, it's right there. Look at that. I have a fast travel, but first things first, I gotta go report to Anna. Yeah, I did not realize that those crawler things are cats. It's kind of disturbing. <sighs> oh, man. Definitely getting a lot done, though, in this episode. I've got news about your fish storage problem. Oh, I'm all ears, Charlie. It only looked like a robbery. Some guy broke into the storage to poison the fish. Near as I can tell, he succeeded, at least partially. I realize it's a lot to take on faith. Look, I've got a sample of what I think is the poison. Though I can't identify it yet. <sighs> See, protect us. That's terrible. What kind of man would do such a thing, and why? I don't know, but I aim to find out. We need to stop distributing the fish. We have to let everyone know about this. 
Kay knows how many people might already be affected. What do you want me to do with the Poisoner once I find him? I'd bring an end to him right there if I were you. The police and court are useless these days. That wasn't the deal. I'm a detective, not a hitman. Fair enough. Fair enough. Report to me when you find him. I'll see that the reward will be more than handsome, if you know what I mean. I'll, uh, see what I can do. One thing still bothers me. The guard at the storage, Daryl. What was he doing at the time? <laughs> Fought like a, like a lion. He missed the intrusion. You should hire better guards. That jump was twiddling his thumbs and almost completely missed the break-in. <laughs> that piece of drock. I'll make sure he gets what's coming to him. Thank you for telling me, Charlie. I've found what looks suspiciously like a dungeon in the basement of your fish storage. Care to explain? Excuse me? You've found what? A dungeon. Chains, shackles, and blood. Ring any bells? Oh, I have no idea what you're talking about, but it sounds awful. We, we only started renting the place a few weeks ago. Oh, goodness. I'm going to have to ask our landlord several uncomfortable questions, it seems. Thanks for the heads up, Charlie. See you later. <laughs> I got the trophy for being brutally honest. But honestly, as a detective, you need to be brutal in order to get down to what you need to know. Definitely can't be around the bush as a detective. If I remember correctly too, this game does have multiple endings. So you could leave the city in the world to its inevitable end, or you could try to stop it, or something like that. From what I saw, the trophies. That was interesting. Huh, well, there doesn't seem to be a bet for maintenance, huh? Welcome to, to the University of Oakmont. <laughs> How can I help you? Tell me about this flask. I need to find Professor Westerbrook. Looking for Professor Westerbrook. You know where I can find him? You're, you're, you're the one bringing him this specimen? Uh, specimen? Oh, oh n n never mind. Uh, he, he's in the d Department of Medicine. Let, let, let me show you. 
You recognize this bottle? You know where it comes from? Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> we have hundreds of b bottles like this in the university. Uh, fine. I need to know what's in it. Any suggestions? Ah, uh, you need an, an analysis. Well, I'm sure someone from the Department of Medicine c can help there. You have a good day. G g goodbye, sir. Is this important? Wendell sent you to deliver me the books, right? Um, no. You must have me confused with someone else. Oh, excuse me. I'm just worried for the fate of these tomes. It's been a week without news from Wendell. Maybe you can help me. I I'd reward you, of course. Why not? What can I do? Oh, marvelous. Let's get acquainted then. Samuel hopes. Honorary member of Altera Pa's book club? Charles Reed, private eye. Good, good. Listen, we're missing three rare books. One was taken for restoration while the other two were being studied. I asked Windle to contact all parties, but he's gone quiet. Here's our records. Please, retrieve the tomes. They're so very valuable. Why are they so valuable? They're the third, seventh, and ninth tomes written by the humble servant. The collection of all eleven books is our most prized possession. The author's real name is a mystery, but we know that he was an Oakmonter for sure. Okay, I'm on it. Bye. Hm. Okay, so that was just a side quest. Glad I talked to him though, because... I think I would have passed that up pretty easily. Department of Medicine's over there. Yeah, I think that's the one downfall in this game. Um, is you don't know where all the side quests are. So... I have a feeling I'm going to beat this game and miss out on a lot of side quests. Like, you would almost have to look up a guide to make sure you got them all. Or perpetually wander the city to death. <laughs> Which could be tedious. Hello, sir. Welcome to Oakmont University Department of Medicine. I'm Samuel. Uh, Charles Reed, private investigator. I have a few questions if you don't mind. You recognize this bottle? Maybe you could tell me what's inside. Hmm. That's one of our lab bottles. We have a lot of them. As for what's inside, I'd need to run some tests. Yeah, could you do that for me? These tests aren't cheap. And the other day, I could get right to it, but we're, uh, somewhat hindered right now. What's up? Our lab is crawling with, well, creatures. Professor Westerbrook's research is a little unconventional, and something went wrong. Really wrong. So, if I do a little pest control for you, you'll run those tests for me. For free? Our budget is tight. You'd be helping the cause of science, Mr. Reed. Isn't that enough? Oh, I guess science could help itself. All right. Yes, you solve all problem, and I'll run the test for you. Off the books. Here's the key for the basement. Welcome to the Department of Medicine. EOD is banned. To all staff and students of the University of Oakmont, henceforth any mention of the Everyone's Obvious Duty organization, also known as EOD, is symbolics. Current and or past members, as well as espousing their beliefs, is forbidden on university grounds. On pain of dismissal and or expulsion, 
the administration has received numerous reports of EOD activity and outreach discuss, disguised as so-called charity work throughout our university and all over Oakmont. This dangerous activity has reached ep epidemic proportions and cannot be tolerated. Administration of the Board of Trustees. Interesting. They're not happy, that's for sure. Free. That's the basement. Make sure I got everything first. And give me one second, because I did hear my baby calling me, so one second, guys. Do this. We're in the basement, we go. <laughs> really, it was one creature. How pathetic. Experiment log part one, March 2nd. I have finally received a living specimen. Sadly, it's only the smallest one. The grunts call it Mr. Handsome. But I think it needs a proper name. March 3rd. Was thinking about the name for the specimen all night. I've begun a series of experiments on the creature so far it has proven exceptionally resistant to all of the poisonous substances at my disposal as well as acid and electrocution it's shrieking though is bound to haunt me march 5th last night i had a vision Thousands of hands wrapped around me as a blanket, and I heard the name inside my head, Stygian Harvester. What kind of person would even touch this, not to mention dissect it? I wonder what would happen if I press this button. Should I, or shouldn't I? So very tempting. Oh shit! <laughs> eh, free XP. <laughs> I honestly wasn't expecting that, but that was definitely cool. It was a trophy for reanimator. Some serious equipment they've got here. Oakmont University is clearly well funded. 
And now I need more ammo. Still no rags. Pretty clear to me, the rags are quite rare in this game. It's odd. Very odd. Experiment log part two, March 10th. With those pesky eliminations removed, I can finally continue my experiments. Unhindered, I need to know more. The specimen remained alive, even with half of its eternal organs removed. It's fascinating. I'm on the verge of a breakthrough in biology as we know it. March 15th, I developed a way to reanimate their tissue. Even one that's been dead for weeks. This is monumental. The possibilities of it, the implications. Does this hint at something hidden? Some trait present inside other creatures and perhaps even ourselves? I will need to find volunteers. Great. Creepy. That's funny though, that's a trophy to push the button. I'm creature free. Excellent, Mr. Reed. You've done us a great favor. Now we can get things up and running again. Your lab was, uh, interesting. Running experiments on those creatures, what's up with that? Oh, they're fascinating, aren't they? Convincing evidence of new branches in the evolutionary tree. Can you blame us for taking an interest? Maybe not, but so much dead flesh down there, that's going to attract scavengers. Didn't you think about that? Uh, hmm. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> well, be more careful in the future. Your point's taken. Okay. I've done my part. Here's the bottle. Now you run those tests. Uh, yes. Wait here. It shouldn't take long. We finished that analysis, sir. It's, well, it's ricin. Ricin? A highly toxic poison extracted from castor beans. It's slow-acting, but absolutely fatal to humans. So, where do you get ricin? This isn't something you can pick up from a drugstore. Ah, uh, about that. It is rare, but we have a certain amount of it here. For study, in our poison store. Or we did. I'm afraid that must be where it came from. The label had been tampered with, but it certainly looks like ours. Where did you find it? Ah, <sighs> crime scene. Someone was trying to poison a bunch of fish with it. This is horrible. I need to warn everyone in the university about this. Who's got access to where the poison's stored? Only Professor Westerbrook has the key. His office is upstairs, right alongside Professor Cavendish's. Professor Westerbrook's not here, though. He's been sick for the last few days. Professor Cavendish is away as well, on vacation. And where do they live? I'm not sure, but probably somewhere in Advent. Most of the teaching staff live there. Wait, you don't think it was one of them? I'm working on that. Can you let me upstairs? I... well... Uh... All right. This is serious. I'll help you. Here's the key, but please don't disturb the professor's things. I'd like to know a bit more about your professors. What do you want to know? I want to know more about Westerbrook. He's the head of our department. He's been here for, well, at least 30 years. He's one of the longest serving staff we have. As you've already seen, he's particularly interested in the wild beasts that recently appeared in our city. Yeah, that's quite the unique fauna you have there. I've no idea how he did it, but Mr. Throgmorton's men brought him live specimens for his research. 
He thinks he's on the verge of a breakthrough in evolutionary theory. A secret that once revealed will benefit all humankind. <sighs> Some secret should stay buried. Six feet under. You're not a man of science, are you? It's not about why. It's about what if. What can you tell me about Professor Cavendish? He's one of the most brilliant teachers we have here. A PhD at only 25. Just imagine. His biochemistry studies are second to none. Worthy of a Nobel Prize. If he could complete his work. What's his problem? I don't know. There's some kind of family trouble. It's made him standoffish and irritable. And easily distracted. I hope he gets through whatever he's going through. We need his talent, especially in these dark times. I'll see you later. Alright. Got a skill point. So I'm almost kind of curious if I should start going to damage, because I feel like I'm just not doing enough damage. Keep an extra bullet loaded, getting a chance to deal double damage with the pistol. Machine gun accuracy is increased. Yeah, I don't look like it, I guess. See, I wanted that one. Carry one more first aid kit. Not a bad idea. And then we're probably going to go full born to Vitality, because I feel like I definitely don't have enough health. And Melee won't be bad. Honestly, I'd probably do this whole side next. Still no rags, huh? This is absurd. It's been five months and they still haven't finished repairing my office. I'm done sitting in the corridor like some kind of waiter. I won't step foot into this building again until the works are finished. Or you give me Kevin Dish's office. You tell that to the board. I'm through with this farce, Westerbrook. Brothers and sisters crossed out. Too familiar. My fellow Americans crossed out. They are Americans too. Citizens of Oakmont, how much longer will we put up with those fish faced bast crossed out? Those sea freaks crossed out. <laughs> how much longer will we put up with this? Those K forsaken degenerates who call themselves the EOD crossed out. Okay. This should be good enough to make a decent copy. Door won't 
fudge. George Kevin Dash. Cavendish, a professor at Omar University, is the poison thief. He made himself a copy of the key to the poison locker. According to his student, he lives somewhere in Advent. These bottles look exactly the same as the one with the poison. All evidence collected. I'll see you later. So he lives somewhere in Advent, huh? City Hall. See if we report to Anna first. Other than that, we might have to figure out. Maybe City Hall could tell us where he lives. That would be my guess. I doubt the newspaper would leak his end. Kind of weird. newspapers are nowadays saying that social media is so digital nowadays because I know in the 90s it was a thing for people to read newspapers I know sometimes it's good to read them if you're trying to find like good job postings or trying to find things for sure but I imagine it's way different nowadays. Take as much as you need. It Glad to see you again. Don't be shy. So we don't do nothing with her. 
So let's go to City Hall. That might tell us what we need. Sorry, yeah, I'm like a storm over here. Jeez. Yes, yes, I haven't got all day. What do you want? Uh, just wanted to say hi. I'm new in town. Oh, how nice for you. If you need to look anything up in our archives, get in line like everybody else. Well, if that's the way it is, then that's the way it is. Good. I'm glad we understand each other. Bye. Why oh, ain't she a grumpy lady? Oh, that I was right. There is an archives here. Nothing else here. Subjects, uh, citizens, citizen records, and the advent. George Walter Cavendish, date of birth, January, so on, birthplace, Oakmont, Mass, place of residence, Oakmont, Mass, advent, central. St. Michael's Road between... Yep, that gave us everything. He's screwed. Screwed, I tell you! Advent Central on Michael St. Michael's Road, which is right there, between Carpenter Street and... Constitution Street. So there's Constitution Street and Carpenter Street. So he lives somewhere there and flat too. Not bad. But as it so happens, we are actually at the end of our video here, so I'm going to go ahead and call it, and then I'm going to be right back with the second video pretty immediately, so uh, I'll see you guys in a little bit. See you later. Bang here, and welcome to another episode of The Sinking City. So, we're back at it. We were tracking down a university professor that apparently poisoned a fish supply that belonged to the EOD. Obviously, they have some pretty fulfilled hate from the looks of it. Not too sure why, but I'm sure we're going to find out. So here we go. So just to forewarn, I'm gonna probably end this video a little abruptly early, probably an hour and a half in, uh, just because I have to get my daughter and I are ready to go for an appointment. So definitely want to give myself some ample time. Uh, 
much. Or not, yeah, we're gonna get further into the main story. I think at this point, I'm only gonna push the main story. So, if you want it, take it. It's free. <laughs> what? <sighs> the door won't budge. Huh. Well, anyway. No lock's going to keep me out. And judging by the layer of dust on it, this ring hasn't been worn in a long time. So why keep it around? It's depressing. Depressing little kitchens. Professor's fact list, uh, Westerbrook usually has his lunch about half past two, gets some soap, and uh, always stays at the fish market. She shouldn't learn about me. New hauls of fish arrive every two days, an ounce per box will be enough. The guard spends most of his time on the second floor during the night think about a way to divert uh, suspicions from Westerbrook. Don't want him to come to an A and B. Wow, this guy's ultra culprit right here. Uh, disturbance in the shells as fighting breaks out between locals and inns mouthers. Uh, the cause of the conflict appeared to be the disappearance of several women. With locals accusing a group of in-mouthers in of the crime. The Oakmont police continue to investigate the vanishings, but as yet the case remains unsolved. One source from the shells reports that traces of fish scales and seaweed were found at multiple victims' homes which seems to have participated uh, pre-peditated the fight yeah I know the word in my head it can't say it for some reason huh so his wife was taken and he's blaming it on EOD which you know obviously EOD doesn't stand for what it means. This Cavendish guy did an impressive investigation, and the EOD is in the center of all of it. I don't know what EO would stand for, but I bet D stands for Dagon. Uh, going, going, gone. Body count rises as vanishings continue across Oakmont. Locals are in a panic. The most of the reported disappearances occurring in the shells. Salvation Harbor and Grimhaven Bay. Captain Caleb Lyons of the Oakmont Police has put out a call for information. Our evidence suggests a link between these disappearances and the charity organization EOD that has recently risen to prominence among the city's poor, said Lyons. Most of the victims seem to have either joined this group or been a recipient of their alms. We encourage anyone with information to come forward. The Chronicle reminds readers to avoid any suspicious newcomers, especially Innsmouthers, and to remain at home during evening hours. Stay alert. This Cavendish guy did an impressive investigation, and the EOD is in the center of all of it. So, EOD ranks are swelling. The 
EOD has much more going on than charity organizations. They're dirty. I know it. Whatever they're up to isn't good. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> they're locked. Not gonna keep me out. I loved you. I always loved you. You will never understand our cause! My child is blessed by the sea! I'm leaving you, George! George? I can't live like this anymore. There's something I have to tell you. I don't care what your damn EOD cult demands, Anna! I thought the child was mine! Mine! <laughs> okay. I don't care what your You will never understand our cause! My child is blessed by the sea! I'm leaving you, George! George Cavendish. He had a wife named Anna. She had a baby that was not his, but blessed by the sea and claimed by the EOD. This caused their split. you well what are you doing here calm down my name's Charles Reed I'm a private investigator right now you look like someone who's breaking into my house a, a, a burglar I explain yourself <laughs> I'm surprised you'd be calm after that crazy ass dream no you should explain yourself. easy there Anna from the fish market asked me to find you. You know her, right? I should have guessed. I know her much better than you think. What does she want from me now? She already took everything I have. It's not about what she wants. It's about what you did. Poisoning the fish. Sound familiar? Yeah, I can prove you did it. Hold on. Before you jump to conclusions, I want you to know that I had a good reason to do what I did. It all comes back to Anna. Oh, this should be fun. What's your good reason for poisoning innocent people? You know the EOD are feeding the hungry, don't you? No. That's exactly the problem. They're not doing it out of charity. They do it to spread their influence and recruit new members. Some of those initiates, as they call them, vanish without a trace. And not just them. They kidnap ordinary folks, too. And poisoning the fish would prevent this how? Oh, you see. Not everyone in this city believes in the EOD yet. They have opposition among the citizens, both rich and poor. A rumor of the EOD's fish being poisonous and several incidents would be enough to undermine the EOD by sparking fear and mistrust. There must be another way to deal with the EOD. Like, if their crimes are that obvious, why don't you just go to the police? <sighs> They're resourceful, those sons of hagfish. They maintain a squeaky clean image, and Kay, they're good at it. I tried going to the police. They were no help at all. 
and I'm not suicidal enough to make it public and take them to court. What's Anna got to do with all this? As you might have already gleaned, she is... was... my wife. Uh-huh. Yeah, it all starts to come together now. The EOD robbed me of her. It all started with the free fish. We were all short on food at the time, and then they hooked her with their nonsense about the benevolent sea and greater good. I looked past it for some time, but then... She became pregnant. Yes. At first, I was over the moon. But then one day she came to me, that snake, and told me that the child was not mine. She said it was blessed by the sea, that it was demanded by the EOD. Doom take them! I couldn't stand it. I just couldn't. What did she mean? Blessed by the sea. What do you think is the cause of Innsmouth Syndrome in people? Uh, living in Innsmouth? That K-forsaken place has nothing to do with it. It comes from breeding with monsters. These sea creatures they call Deep Ones. They take our women and they spoil them with their seed. Then they give birth to degenerate fish-faced offspring. Where did you learn all of this? This information about the EOD? After Anna left, I had nothing. But I did have a lot of time to research Innsmouthers, the EOD, and the story behind them. It is an old and powerful organization. They appeared back in the mid-19th century in Innsmouth, and the first people with the Innsmouth Syndrome starts not coincidentally. No, uh, of course not. And the EOD is immensely rich. The sudden rise to power of the Blackwood family happened right after they joined them. So what's your next move? I... was interrupted and couldn't finish my task. The EOD received a fresh haul of fish, but now they're on alert and raised their guard. I understand I'm in no position to ask. But after reviewing all the facts I've presented to you, Mr. Reed, would you agree to help me? Keep talking. Now what is it you want from me? Poison the rest of the fish. It's spreading, but it's not enough. The EOD trusts you enough to deal with me, so it should be simple for you. My agent inside the EOD reports that they've just received a fresh haul. That's your target. Your agent inside the EOD. Is he fairly high up the ranks? Ah, I see where this is going. You need something from the EOD too. Yeah. I'm trying to find a certain person who may be held by them. My, my agent can arrange that. If someone is being held by the EOD, he'll know it. It's a win-win situation. All right. Look, I'm gonna need to think about this. Uh, of course. But don't be too long. I'm going to need an answer before I let you go. I hope you can understand why. Interesting. Honestly, I'm more inclined on being on his side than try just betraying him and trying to butter up Anna. But so unfortunately, uh my wife is coming home and she wants to have lunch before we go to our appointment, so I actually gonna have to end it here so I'm probably Mr. Editing Me is gonna try to put it with my last episode so we'll see what happens i may not have another episode today so i do apologize uh, might just be fade to silence immediately
when I get back from everything. And judging by the layer of dust, so side, this ring uh, is yeah, time. we'll definitely pick this up keep it around. either next Wednesday or maybe if I deduce I have enough time for another video. Other than that, I will see you guys in the next one. See you later.